I was just watching a video of Jim Hall playing with Art Farmer. It was a clinic in tasteful comping. He did everything right to make that band sound better. But it made me think about the things most guitarists get wrong when they're comping. And in this video, I'm going to share the seven deadly sins of comping and what you can do about them. Hi, I'm Dr. George with Jumpstart Jazz Guitar. This channel is dedicated to help you make the transition from rock or blues to jazz as quickly as possible. You learn to play jazz building on things you already know, and we make the complex topics a lot simpler. New videos come out weekly, so hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any of them. Comping means both accompanying and complimenting. And it's what we spend most of our time doing, but it's really hard to practice by yourself, and that leads to problems. Because what sounds good alone doesn't always sound good with others. So here are seven things that you have to avoid. So number seven, not locking into the groove. The groove is everything. Without it, nothing works. Duke wasn't kidding. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And it needs to be something that's internal to you. You can't rely on the other players for it. Now, there's one problem I see a lot, and that is sloppy upbeats. It's pretty common, especially if you play a lot of acoustic guitar. I see a lot of players who can find the downbeat just fine, but the upbeats are just kind of somewhere in between and not very consistent. But the upbeats are the key to swing, and they have to be just as crisp and as precise as the downbeat. So the best thing you can do here is to practice with real recordings. Don't use computer-generated ones. They have time, but no groove. You can play basic rhythms like the four-beat swing, Charleston, or Latin, and lock in with the groove. Another alternative is the Abersol Playalogs. They can be streamed now, and it's not expensive. There's a link down in the description below. Number six is not knowing your role. There are four possible roles as a comping instrument. You can be part of the foundation or the timekeeping, you can also be playing counter rhythms to the foundation. You can play pads, which are sustained sounds, or when the lead leaves some space, you can play a fill. Your role is going to change depending upon the instrumentation in the group. If you're in a big band, you're going to be part of the foundation, playing time. Now, that might sound boring, but it's pretty important. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're the only accompanist, you can play all of the roles at one point in time or another. And as we add instruments, you'll play fewer roles. If a bass player is there, you won't be part of the foundation and you'll maybe focus more on playing counter rhythms. And basically, the more instruments in the band, the fewer roles you play. And then there's the piano. That's a special case in itself, and it leads us to the next sin. Number five is clashing with the pianist. It's just a fight you can't win. They've got ten fingers, you've got four. The key is contrast. One thing you can try to do is be really sparse and try to put that one chord in exactly the perfect place. It takes a lot of patience and listening, but it can really be effective. Another option is to be rhythmic, particularly if there's no drummer. Then you can more or less be a percussion instrument rather than a comping instrument. And if your pianist is especially busy, it's okay to lay out. Whatever makes the band sound better. And definitely lay out when they're soloing. One other thing. 
I'm not a fan of alternating choruses. It's better to just create a good sound and stick to it. Number four is stepping on the lead. Now, the lead is the most important role in the band. And so your job as a comping instrument is to make them sound good. The first thing you should be aware of is their range. Stay out of it. When I was listening to that Jim Hall recording, one thing that struck me was that he was using voicings that were almost entirely on the middle four strings, which meant that he stayed out of the way of the trumpet's main range. Another thing to consider is when the lead is active, you should be either be playing a sustain chord or nothing at all. Think call and response too. This is where fills come in. But remember, your fills can be just one or two attacks. I hope you're enjoying these videos and that they're helping you play better. But YouTube videos can only go so far. The Jumpstart Jazz Guitar Coaching Program is designed to get you playing jazz guitar with confidence as quickly as possible. The program is designed for busy adults like you. You work at your convenience and you learn exactly what you need to know when you need it. And you get unlimited feedback from me. Sign up for a free trial lesson. The link's down below. And so now we've made it to the top three. Number three is confusing the singer. Unless you're at the top of the profession, you're going to run into some singers who have some very nice voices, but who are not really the best musicians. And so if you change the chords up too much, you're going to confuse them. And if you don't give them clear entrances, they're going to miss them. Your job is to make them sound good and to get them to give you the best performance they can give. So you have to do some extra things. One trick you can do is to use rhythm for entrances. Using a pedal point like that gives them an opportunity to come in whenever they're ready. And you can repeat that pretty much as long as you need to. Another thing that you want to make sure that you do with singers is give them plenty of visual cues. So you can't have your nose buried in the fake book or your chart, and you've really got to be paying attention and listening to them. And now number two, overplaying. This was the one I was most guilty of. My comping sounded great. Good melodic ideas, altered chords, substitutions, everything you'd expect. But there was one problem. It's not a chord solo. It's comping, and I wasn't doing the job. That doesn't sound too bad by itself, but now listen to it with the soloist. As a comping instrument, the job is to lay down a groove that makes the soloist and the band sound better. Not one that distracts from them and calls attention to yourself. When was the last time anyone listened to a band and said, wow, that was great comping? So do your job and don't overplay. And so now we've made it to the worst sin of all. Number one, not listening. You get too worried about what chord to play or trying to sound good, which often leads to overplaying. It's just easy to get wrapped up in what you're doing and not really listening to the rest of the band. I hear this often, you know, players playing when they shouldn't, playing chords that don't quite match. There's so much to be listening to. You need to lock in with the drums and the bass. You need to support your solo. You can't be clashing with the pianist. When it comes down to it, all of those other sins are really a result of this one. When I recorded that last track, I had the soloist muted, so I wasn't listening to them at all. 
Here's another version now where I am listening. The tracks I'm using are generated by Band in a Box, and the soloist is generated by the program, too. This makes it a lot better for practicing comping, because you have to listen to something other than just yourself. If you'd like a couple of tracks like that, join my Patreon group, and you can download them for free. The bottom line is, is when you're comping, you need to check your ego at the door. The job of a comping instrument is to make someone else sound good. And when you do, the band sounds better. Ironically, the better you sound, the more you're noticed, the worse the band sounds. And other than guitarists and the band, no one's listening to you. Get off on making the band and the soloist sound good. Comping is an art form, and it takes a special mindset. And so now that you know what not to do, check out this video to learn about what you should do. <laughs>